from his studios in New York. It's time for Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, where sports meets life. Here's your host, Dan Tortora. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. Hope you're all doing well, enjoying your Tuesday morning, October 23rd. I want to thank CNS for being a part of the show. Jai McGriff, Shy Broadwater, Jordan Seltzer, Jeremiah Willis, Connor Hayes, and of course head coach in his fourth season and third undefeated regular season in a row, Dave Klein. And I want to thank Chick-fil-A Cicero for everything that we get to do out at Chick-fil-A and every single month being at Chick-fil-A Cicero and 7916 Brewerton Road in Cicero, New York. Thanks to Jim Sikowski and the entire team. Shout out to Kelsey and everybody that has uh, has been there and has helped us out and, and done great things. And to everybody at Chick-fil-A who meets my dog. And uh, the last time I went to Chick-fil-A and went through the drive through I uh, I had this uh, one gentleman helping me, and this girl came over, and she's just like, oh, I just came over to meet the dog. And then going through the drive through and getting to the window and having the one girl, she's just like, oh, my God, she's so cute. And I was like, yeah, she loves Chick-fil-A. I didn't think anybody loved Chick-fil-A more than I did. And then I decided to give my uh, little dog, Lily, and for those of you that listen to the show and follow me on social media, you know she's my sidekick. She loves Chick-fil-A. I gave her a fry, and then she wanted another fry. And then whenever I came home, she was she would see the logo and the fry box, and then when we ran out of fries, she would have to stick her face in there and make sure they're all gone. And she had to do that three times one day. And then one day I came home with a milkshake. I didn't have anything else, no food, no fries. So I was like, she's not f- smelling the fries or anything. I just had a milkshake, but she knows the logo. So for people, animals aren't smart. She knows the Chick-fil-A logo. And when she sees the Chick-fil-A logo, it's like, Daddy, I need some. I got to get some right now. And, you know, it, it, it's it's just so, it's crazy. So uh, the one girl in the drive through she's like, that's dedication that I had Lily with me. And we were getting some fries. And then I told Lily she could have some fries if she was patient. And she ended up sticking her face inside of the bag, like putting her, she's got this new thing now where she puts her whole nose inside of the bag, like, I'll just kind of peek around and see if there's anything I like in here. So, Chick-fil-A, you do well by the family, and you've done well by me, but I just want to let you know that you are Lily approved, and if you're Lily approved then there's a really good chance you're going to be around for a very long time. So not that Chick-fil-A needed the help, but Chick-fil-A Cicero has the love and respect from my little pup, Lily, who's my little daughter. So treat her like a daughter. She goes out on trips with Papa, and she's in the studio with me all the time, and she just ran over to me when she heard me talking about her because she's a little bit of a ham. So shout out to Chick-fil-A. And uh, just know that, again, you are Lily approved at Chick-fil-A, which is always the only way to be in life is Lily approved. So thank you to Chick-fil-A. And and once again, and we had taped this a, a few days back when we were live on location. So that's why you heard me say first playoff game. Obviously, this week is their second playoff game. And I'm very excited about the opportunity of being out there and seeing all the teams, the Final Four. And uh, I can't wait to be there for these games. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'm super excited. And, you know, uh, I just uh, just spent some time with the West Genesee team. You're going to hear from them tomorrow. You're going to hear from from West Jenny's Brian Felix, Chandler McAvin, Cole Wade, Ben Ruste, and head coach Joe Corley. In, uh, in just a little bit. You'll hear from them on Wednesday. So uh, CNS is playing Fayetteville Manlius FM at 4.30 p.m. at CNS, 
followed by Liverpool playing West Tennessee at 7.30 p.m. at CNS. I will be at both games. They're both this Friday on October 26th, CNS FM at 4.30, Liverpool, West Jenny at 7.30, both at CNS, both Class AA, both worth watching. So make your way out to CNS and support the local community. It is always an honor and a privilege for me to have the opportunity to speak with these young men and women as well as the coaches inside of the community and I want to thank West Genesee and I want to thank the Wildcat Sports Pub for believing in me and giving me the opportunity helping me to have the opportunity to bring this to life and the same for Chick-fil-A Cicero and CNS so big ups to everybody from CNS big time win that they had in the first round of the playoffs and now they get set to face FM Jai McGriff, Shy Broadwater, Jordan Seltzer, Jeremiah Willis, Connor Hayes, and head coach Dave Klein. And the cool thing about it is I got to be a part of the team meal after the show when we all ate at Chick-fil-A after, and I got to have the team meal with everybody, which was a lot of fun. So thank you for uh, CNS for not only being at the show and for all that you do and for all your hard work and all your determination and your perseverance, but also for uh, for joining me and, and breaking some bread with me after the show. So it meant a lot. It was on a day that I needed it most. So thank you that we got to spend some time together. It really means a lot and it goes a long way. So I hope you enjoyed that part of it and me being on the hot seat. People always seem to enjoy the, <laughs> enjoy that section. So And I don't mind it. You know, I don't know any other broadcaster that puts themselves on the hot seat or that flips the script and says, now you get to ask me questions. But you know what? For me, I love it because it's fair, it's honest, and to me, it's very exciting. So, I mean, I have no problem whatsoever in doing it. Obviously, I don't shy away from it. And, you know, it's it's always in my line of work and, and in my life in general, it's dare to be different for all the right reasons. So, big ups to everybody that, uh, that, that appreciates that and loves that. And if you don't, then, well, that's fine because I'm going to continue to be me no matter what. And that's something that you learn over time is if you're a good person who's working hard, not hurting anybody, you don't have to stop your train for anybody. No matter how much they ask you to stop it, they're just trying to get you to slow down your drive, slow down what you're doing and, and your success. And nobody that loves you and appreciates you would ever snuff out your flame and ask you to stop. So... Keep doing what you're doing in life and keep being good to yourself. Speaking of keep doing what you're doing and don't snuff out the flame, my guy Mo Neal is on the show right now, and Mo and I had the opportunity to speak with one another following Syracuse's 40-37 to overtime victory over the North Carolina Tar Heels. And Mo and I started our conversation on Tommy DeVito, who stepped in and took over. And I, you know, I was sitting in the press box, and I respect the heck out of Eric Dungy, so let me preface that. I was sitting in the press box, and after Dungy had the 16-yard touchdown run, after almost throwing an interception when he threw behind his receiver, who I believe was Mo. after that opening drive of the second half touchdown, it was five punts, a fumble, and a punt. And I said, listen, just put in... Tommy DeVito, even just to get Eric Dungy to slow down, to think about it, to get him off the tracks. You know, if this train is on fire and it's running off the tracks, pull it off, hose it down, give him a second to shake it off. And even just for that, do that. Because he was floundering and he wasn't leading the team. He was just running around by himself. So it's take him off, give him a second, let him regroup, you know. There's no sense in doing the definition of insanity, same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Back up, think about what you're doing, assess the situation, and then move forward. So I thought Tommy should come in, and they finally put him in, and Tommy DeVito stepped back, threw a touchdown, had three touchdowns on the day, one interception, 11 for 19 and Mo Neal is speaking with me on Tommy DeVito's pocket presence. Here we go. Uh, he handled it real well. You know, he got uh, he got ice in his veins, man. A, he, he he's a great kid. You know, um, you know it could happen for you know a better player. So you know he he, he deserved it, and he's 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 he stepped up real well when we needed him. 
to start the second half, you get the touchdown with Dungey out there, and then it's five punts, it's a fumble, and then another punt. When that switch comes, just how did the offense get around it? How do you skill guys kind of get around a switch like that that comes at that point in the game? Um, you know, we just try to stay positive. We try to keep each other up. You know, the team did a great job of keeping me up. I got down on myself when I had the tough fumble, um, you know, down in the red zone, uh, you know. And uh, guys, you know, we just we just handled ourselves really well, um, you know. Everybody, man, I'm just so proud of the guys and, you know, just how great of a job that we've done. You brought up the, the fumble where you had the ball high as you were going down. They reviewed it for a while. Just what you saw or what you took away from that play? Um, you know, it's just, you know, it's happening. Uh, you know, um, you know, I try to make a move. As I was making my move, the ball kind of got away from my body. Uh, and as I was going down, uh, you know, it came out, you know, um, thought I was down. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, it's one of those plays you got to put it behind you. DeVito comes in and throws three touchdown passes. Just what you could say about, like you said, ice water in the veins, but just, I mean, this is a guy that was a red shirt last year. I mean, and now he comes into a game in the 11th hour and doesn't do a little bit. He does more than enough, yeah. especially in overtime. Uh, yeah, he, he, he does a great job, man. Um, you know, like I say, he's uh, he. He's unbelievable, you know, like I said, him and Dungey, you know, like I said, we're not losing step. You know, Dungey showed, you know, uh, great leadership, you know, coming out of the game. Uh, he did get down, you know, he encouraged everybody, even Tommy. Um, you know, he's still right there with him the whole way. And, uh, you know, Tommy, he does what Tommy does. I mean, he's that's why we recruited him, you know. He was a talented guy coming out of high school, and uh, like I say, we put that on display tonight. Ravion Pierce, I think it's probably 95% of the time over the middle he can catch that pass, yeah. and that's the play that wins the game. Yeah, oh yeah, most definitely, man. That, that play is money. You know, Ray Ray thrives on that play. You know, he's he's one of our big red zone threats, and, uh, you know, it was a big play. It was a big play and came in handy. He is such an energy guy. Mm -hmm. He likes contact. He mm -hmm. doesn't shy away from anything. What does that do for the offense? What does it do for you? When you see a guy like Ravion, I want the ball, I want the contact, I want the pressure. Uh, you know, he's a competitor. You know, Ravion, he's not going to shot from nothing. You know, you can tell that he's a fiery guy. You know, he's going to put it all on the line. You know, great teammate. Um, you know, of course, he wants the ball. He's a playmaker. I mean, we're all playmakers. Uh, we know it's only one ball out there, though. So, you know, we've got to make the best of our opportunities when we touch it. Uh, you know, and, you know, we do a great job of that. And, uh, you know, Ravion, he's, he's a great player. Five and two is a lot different than four and three. Mm -hmm. This team has had four wins for the last three seasons. Now, no matter what, it will be more than that. And you're one step away from a bowl. Just mm -hmm. what you can say about that? Great, man. You know, great opportunity. Uh, you know, the team, we've done an unbelievable job. You know, we've been working for this all spring, all summer, you know, all fall camp. You know, it's, it's, we just, we, we've been waiting on this moment, man. And, uh, you know, it's finally here. But we got a lot of season left to play. You know, we just got to keep pushing. We got to stick together. And I guess it's an early birthday gift because I'm October 21st, you're wearing 21, and it ends up happening. So oh, yeah. I guess I have to say thank you for that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> thank you. Happy birthday. What's the day? The 21st? 20th. 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 Okay. 20th. Okay. Happy early birthday. Happy thank early birthday. Thank you. Birthday. Yes, sir. That coming once again from Mo Neal, running back of the Syracuse Orange, who wears number 21. They played on October 21st, almost played into October or pardon me, they played on October 20th, almost played into October 21st, the way the game was going. I was in the Dome for five hours from around 12.30 to past 5.30 as this game went into double OT and ultimately the victory going to Moniel and the Syracuse Orange. And like I, like I said to him, you know, I guess it was an early birthday gift and he obviously wears 21 and my birthday is 10-21 and that's where the happy birthday is came from. Syracuse in the standings right now of the Atlantic is inside of the top four. Clemson is 4-0, and 7-0 and overall. NC State's 2-1 and in the conference after losing to Clemson, 5-1 and overall. BC's 2-1, 5-2 and and overall. Syracuse is 2-2, two 5-2 and two, five and two overall. Florida State's 2-3, and 4-3 and three overall, so they're winning some games now. Wake Forest is 0-3 in the conference, 3-4 and four overall. Louisville's 0-4, 2-5 and and in the conference. Oh, they're 0 and 4 in the conference, 2 and 5 overall. And I told you that I thought Louisville would win five to six games this year in a rebuilding year, and they're off to a very, uh, very slow. I don't know if they're going to get to five. Maybe 
two and five right now. Let's see who they have left. So Louisville left on their schedule. Well, they have Kentucky, NC State, Syracuse, Clemson, and Wake Forest. So maybe they'll get three wins this year. Virginia Tech is at the top of the coastal. The ACC at three and zero, four and two overall. Virginia is right behind them. How about that? The battle for the state of Virginia. I love that. Love it. Charlottesville versus Blacksburg. Virginia Tech is first in the coastal. Virginia is second, three and one in the conference, five and two overall. Miami's third, two and one in the conference, five and two overall. Pitt right behind Miami at two and one, three and four overall. Duke is one and two in the conference. Five and two overall, though. Georgia Tech's one and three, and North Carolina's one and three in the conference. Georgia Tech three and four overall, and North Carolina is one and five on the season. The only team worse than Syracuse last year of 14 ACC teams was North Carolina at three and nine. Syracuse at four and eight. Syracuse defeats North Carolina, heads to five and two, and North Carolina almost the exact opposite at one and five. And to take a look at Mo Neal and what Mo Neal's done, i got to give him a shout-out as you just heard from him and show him some love. Mo Neal has been the back that they have leaned on in some of these games here, and he's been able to do some good things. First game, 29 carries against Western Michigan for 84 yards. Second game, 9 carries for 71, 19 for 75, 13 for 116 against UConn. 7 for 21 against Clemson, 9 for 38 against Pitt, and 9 for 68 against North Carolina. He only has two touchdowns, and they happen against Western Michigan as far as uh, running the ball and doesn't have any receiving touchdowns. So he's had a TD drought in the last six games, but he has been utilized a lot more than last season. And uh, the big question right now is who does Syracuse start in their home game, which is going to be Saturday Night Lights at nighttime at 7 o'clock this Saturday, October 27th. Really cool thing about this is that that means that we have a 5 p.m. live show at the Press Room Pub on 220 Herald Place in historic Herald Square. And I cannot wait to be at the Press Room Pub this Saturday, October 27th at 5 p.m. with Rob Drummond, and then head up to the Dome for the 7 p.m. kickoff. So come and see us. If you're out of town and can't make it, you can go to Facebook Live at 5 p.m. this Saturday, October 27th, facebook.com backslash live now DT. You could go here to mixlr.com backslash wake up call DT. And you can listen to us here as well. We live stream on MixLR. We do live video on Facebook. And we're live to the patrons that come out to the Press Room Pub. Had our best show, probably one of our top two best shows of this the first season, doing the pregame show there with Rob Drummond at the Press Room Pub. And one of our best shows was this last Saturday. A lot of people there and a lot, lot, a lot of beautiful faces and a lot of great support. So, and a shout out to to Danny and Heather and the family that came out to uh, to see us uh, at a time where I really needed it, and I let Danny know that yesterday. So, uh, shout out to everybody that uh, that came out and that watches our videos and supports what we do. We will be at the Press Room Pub before Syracuse NC State this Saturday, October twenty seventh at five p.m. at seven p.m. You'll have the opportunity, obviously, to see the game at the Dome or to stay at the Press Room Pub after our live pregame show and watch the game there. The big question is, though, who is the starting quarterback? Who should be the starting quarterback? And I put that up in a poll that I've carried in a bunch of different places this week. I put it up yesterday. We've already got a bunch of responses. So I'm going to go to Twitter first. That's at CallDT, C-A-L-L-D-T. That's C A. L-L-D-T. Go there and you can vote in polls every single week. I'm always putting something up. It's 50-50 on Twitter right now. 50% say start Eric Dungy against NC State. And the other 50% say start Tommy DeVito. It is Snake Eyes. And you can vote for the next few days this week. I think it'll carry till Friday. So go to Twitter. Follow me at CallDT, C-A-L-L-D-T, and vote, vote, vote. In this, I also put it up in the Syracuse Orange Empire page that I am an administrator of. I put up the poll there, and let's see what we got. So, so far in the poll, 
how many votes we have. Okay, so Tommy DeVito is winning this one. Tommy DeVito has uh, just a couple more votes than Eric Dungy. So Tommy DeVito is winning on Syracuse Orange Empire. Tommy DeVito is winning on Twitter at CallDT. And Tommy DeVito on the Wake Up Call page on Facebook, facebook.com backslash wakeupcalldt, or just go to at Wake Up Call DT. I believe he's winning there too. If I check that he was, let's see this. We got a lot of votes on this one as well. Yes, Tommy is actually pulling out pretty far in this one. Fifty six percent Tommy, forty four percent Eric. So on Twitter it's it's even. On Syracuse Orange Empire on Facebook that I am an administrator of with a bunch of phenomenal people and we got over a thousand in our group during the ACC tournament this past March. We all fought to make it happen, and you guys did it. I put out some posts and said, let's make it happen, and I think you guys did it in an hour. So, awesome you. I think it was, a, it was very quick. So, on Syracuse Orange Empire, it is slightly Tommy DeVito. On Twitter, it is tied. And on Wake Up Call DT's Facebook page, at Wake Up Call DT, or Facebook.com backslash Wake Up Call DT, Tommy DeVito is up 56% to 44%. And one uh, and uh, Chris, I got to give you a shout out. Chris J voted for Danny DeVito, and and then uh, Jordan responded with a picture of Danny DeVito or a uh, GIF of of him shaking his head, which made my day. So big ups to you guys for making me laugh, and uh, and that was awesome. So you know, I I would vote for Danny DeVito too. I I got some love for Danny DeVito. So always a good time, and I uh, I definitely appreciate all the voting. And I appreciate the humor, especially now more than you know. So make sure you keep voting, and I will keep a tally of what people are thinking, and we'll go from there. And speaking of going from there, let's take a step aside here on Wake Up Call with Dan Satora. Right before we we finish the broadcast for the day, I want to get into the opportunity of sharing with you the ingredients to success. So we will do that. Proudly brought to you by Utica Pizza Company, and it's a Utica thing right after this. This is a wake-up call, Fast Break. Get Hilton quality service at the most affordable price at True by Hilton Camillus, located right next to Costco in Township 5. True by Hilton Camillus offers you their signature sport court where you can enjoy basketball, volleyball, pickleball, soccer, lacrosse, and more year-round in their indoor facility. For reservations and information, call 315-314-8676. That's 315-314-8676. True by Hilton Camillus. Hilton quality service at the most affordable price. Gear up with the real deal at Drysig Apparel. Creating what people are going to see and learn about you before they even meet you. Gear up for what you need for your team, business, or event. To look professional, look good, and feel good, outfit yourself at drysigapparel.com. That's D-R-E-I-S-S-I-G apparel.com. The only place to gear up with the real deal. What's the universal language of a fan? Clapping your hands. With Fan Hands, the ultimate sports fan accessory, find your team color, slip them on, and start cheering on your favorite team with 11 different colors always in stock on FanHands.com, where you'll find the ultimate sports fan accessory. Real fans wear Fan Hands. Utica Pizza Company spells family, your family, my family, their family. The recipes that they have shared with each other throughout the years and have now been so gracious to share them with us. I can sit here and talk with you about all the great things that are on the menu. We'd be here forever. So let me say this. Utica Pizza Company is second to none. And now you can bring it home with you and you can dine in in the restaurant. UticaPizzaCompany.com will give you all the information that you need. And let me say, these Utica Greens... They're the best. Utica Pizza Company. Call them and place your order at 315-214-3060. That's 315-214-3060. Families break bread at Utica Pizza Company.
Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. Always proud to be here with you every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time. And we're having a great time here this morning on a Tuesday. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you're doing well. I am I am uh, very emotionally drained. I will tell you that much. You ever have those days where you're just... You're just, you're tapped out. You're like, I'm just going to go to bed for like all day. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, and and I I don't get this way that often, but, you know, uh, unfortunately, um, there's, you know, some unforeseen circumstances that make you feel that way. But ultimately, you know, I'm here. I am loving my life. I thank God every day for the opportunities that he gives me. And I'm just, uh, I'm proud to be here with you. Proud to be here talking with you and spending some time with you here this morning. So I thank you for being a part of the show. And, uh, and I pray that, uh, that you know that you're cared about and that you're loved. And I I pray that you treat the people that you are around, even if they're strangers with respect, dignity, and positivity. Somebody put out a diehard Lakers fan. I got to read this. It says, Trade LeBron now when he still has market value. Get us a superstar who's going to play hard and close out games. Three straight games LeBron has let us down. So, you know, I mean, that is truly a what have you done for me lately. I will tell you that without doubt. That is a what have you done for me lately. Because LeBron James, whether you like him, dislike him or not, is one of the greatest players that is out there, and I'm reading people like, yeah, um, kind of let us down, not a big fan. And I'm like, geez. I know a lot of people that aren't fond of LeBron James, but a few games in and everybody wants to let him go. I find that interesting. Not everybody. I shouldn't say everybody wants to let him go. A few games in and some people want to let him go. Three straight losses. They lost to the Trailblazers by nine. They lost to the Rockets by nine. And they lost to the Spurs by one. And within those games, LeBron James... But that's the thing. People need to understand something. Lonzo Ball is about himself. LeBron James is about himself. That is what... I mean, that's what you get when you get LeBron James. You get a guy who plays for himself. That's what you get. You get someone who plays for himself. That's your reality. You got to understand that. That's the reality. LeBron James is going to play for LeBron James. And no offense, but people should know that when you get LeBron James. You think LeBron James is all about the team and this and the other. I mean, I don't, I don't see it. Maybe he is. But, I mean, and again, Orange Avenger said that's like saying, what did you say here? He said that's like saying trade Tom Brady after the start of their season. Yeah. But you know what? People said that about Jim Harbaugh in Michigan. Yeah, you know, they need to fire Jim Harbaugh. He's such a horrible coach. He he can't coach the football team. You know, when we play these close games and teams like Notre Dame, he just can't get it done. And we're so sick and tired of it. And he's let us down. And Michigan's at the top of the Eastern Division of the Big Ten Conference. They're 5-0 in the conference and 7-1 overall. After losing their first game to Notre Dame, they haven't lost a game since. And then that same conversation was had about one of the coaches that I used to cover when he was at Houston, which is Tom Herman. Get rid of Herman. Herman is trash. Herman can't win games. He's 6-1, and 4-0 in the conference, and Texas is ranked in the top six in the nation, and he hasn't lost since the first game either. So Michigan has a bad first week, and it's fired Jim Harbaugh. And they haven't lost since. And they're at the top of their division in the Big Ten. Texas loses their first week, and it's get rid of Tom Herman. Why'd we get this guy? They haven't lost since, and they're at the top of the Big 12, which doesn't have divisions. It's just 10 teams in the conference. That is why I don't understand people. Because why do you want to give up so easy? But that's the thing about the world we live in. It's so noncommittal. 
these days. It's so non-committal. It's love it till you don't have to love it anymore. Love it till something else comes along that you can love. Here today, gone tomorrow. Love ya, but I don't. But I do, but I don't. And that commitment is an issue, man. Michigan and Texas are in the top seven in the nation in the AP and the coaches poll. And I read after week one that Tom Herman and and Jim Harbaugh are are, are crap, that they're garbage, that they don't deserve to be the head coach of their respective teams. And now you guys have an opportunity to play in the college football playoff. Hello? The only team currently in the – if it ended today, the top four – LSU has a loss. Notre Dame 7-0, Clemson 7-0, Alabama's 8-0. UCF got all the way up to 10 in both because they still don't respect them. And that's fine because they say that it's about equal opportunity, but it's not. And I am a proponent for saying if the college football playoff is only going to be for the Power Five, then don't let – All the other conferences should start their own division, play their own playoffs, and have their own set of rules because it's BS. And maybe the winner of the autonomous group of five and then the rest of the conferences. So here's the rest of the conferences. They all play to a champion. Then the autonomous five, the power five, they all play to a champion. And then those two champions play each other to see who the real champion is. And I would love it. If the group of five, if the uh, remaining conferences, if they took down the Power Five, and I love the Power Five, I'm just saying the level of disrespect is uncanny. And there's certain rules for one that don't count for the other, and that's something that I'll never be for. Is when there's a certain set of rules for one, and there's a different set of rules for the other. That never works out well. It never does anybody any good. And it always leaves people wanting more and people questioning if it's worth it. And right now, if you're in the American Athletic Conference, you are banging on the door and nobody's letting you in. And you kind of, in my opinion, you should have a seat at the table. You play the Power Five every year and you beat them. Not in every single game, but in a lot of them. They don't have like a one and twenty record or a three and thirty or twenty four and seventy. The American Athletic Conference holds their own, and I am more than proud to cover them, and more than proud to share their message. Because people need to start listening, and I'd love to see them out there getting a chance. And with that being said, speaking of giving, getting a chance, getting an opportunity, let's go to the ingredients to success. Proudly brought to you by Utica Pizza Company on 628 South Main Street in North Syracuse, New York. It is the home of the wake-up call number one pick pizza, Chicken Riggy Pizza. If you've never had Chicken Riggies, I don't know how you've lived to this point successfully. And if you haven't had their pizza, same. So you put these both together, and it's, it's a party for the palate. And on my birthday, I had Utica Pizza delivered to the house this past Sunday. We had chicken riggy pizza, pepperoni pizza, and cheese pizza. So, 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 so good. I love the one where you can make your own, and we put eggplant with rigot on it. Ricotta to some people, but eggplant rigot, like an eggplant rollatini. Put that on there on top of the pizza. That's phenomenal. The meat lovers, all their pizza is good, man. All their pizza is good. Their Philly cheesesteak is good. Their meatball sub is good. There, they make a sandwich on pizza dough bread, where it's like it's like garlic and herb and and butter and cheese, right? So they like season all that on the bread itself, the pizza dough. Then they put a Philly cheese steak on there, the peppers, the onions, the cheese, the steak, and then they put their Utica greens inside of it. Then they fold it. Then it, you know, and then they um, they uh, I don't want to say I don't want to say it wrong, like grill it. I, I don't know. They they fold it. And then they throw it in the oven, and then they cut it in half like a sandwich. It is like 
I mean, I don't even know how I'm still here on the radio talking to you, and I haven't run there already. I mean, forget the car. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna jog on foot. So you know, and most things in Syracuse are relatively close. It's not like it's Orlando or Atlanta. You could probably run to Utica Pizza Company from where the studio's at, and and get there in good timing, and and have some lunch or dinner. So make sure you head out to Utica Pizza Company. You can also get the It's a Utica Thing product sauces there. Chicken riggy, vodka riggy, piggy riggy, veggie riggy, and roasted garlic riggy in stores now all throughout Central and Upstate New York. Spiras, Price Chopper, Nichols, Beacon Skiff, Stewart Shops. You can also get the famous tomato pie, and you can get their dressing, and you can get their season, their their pepper, their crushed red pepper. So make sure that you get the seasonings and that you go to 628 South Main Street in North Syracuse, New York to have some great food at Utica Pizza Company seven days a week. And you can get catering, carryouts, and delivery by calling 315-214-3060 like I did on my birthday. 315-214-3060. With that being said, the ingredients to success, we're going to talk about Syracuse football. Syracuse is 5-2. and two. And it's funny how 5-2 and two is, is very, very different on paper than 4-3. Four and, late, four and three. It's, it's, it's one win more or one win less, but it's a world of difference. Five and two makes you look like you're contending for something. Four and three is you're just barely above water. You're barely breathing. Syracuse is able to get to five and two. And their ingredients to success moving forward, I think, is, and I know that you can't change a person you know, they either change themselves or they don't change. You can't change anybody. And, and I've, I've realized that, you know, if, if somebody is a certain way and they want to be that way and they hide who they are and they mask who they are, it eventually all comes out in the wash. So you, you can't tell Dungy to not be who he is. You can't tell him to stop running. But I will tell you that his running is doing no justice for the team. Yes, there's always the chance he can break the big play. There's always the chance he can get a 60-yard touchdown. There's always the chance that it'll just work this time. But there's also the overwhelming opportunity that it won't. And and Eric Dungy has struggled to play a complete game the entire season. He has struggled to get his to get the job done the entire season. You know, we look at okay at Western Michigan. Although, albeit that DeVito made mistakes against Western Michigan, Eric Dungy, and he had gotten hit, this, that, and the other, but he went right back in. You know, So Dungy didn't play a full game against Western Michigan. Against Wagner, it didn't matter because it was Wagner, no offense. Against Florida State, Tommy DeVito had to set in or come in and, and do what he needed to do. Against UConn, not too bad of a contest. Against Clemson, on that final drive, you would have thought that Syracuse was up by 10 just trying to hold on to the ball for dear life. He wouldn't let go of the ball. He wanted to run. He's on his own five-yard line. I'm like, what are you going to do? You're going to run a 90-plus-yard touchdown on fourth and forever with three seconds left on the clock? And then against Pittsburgh, you know, he did do some good things. They did go into overtime. But he did not score a touchdown in the fourth quarter. And he threw one touchdown the entire game. So Dungy has struggled to play a, pl- a complete game all season. And after five straight punts, a fumble, and another punt, they put in Tommy DeVito against North Carolina. And I'm sitting up, like I said, I'm sitting up in the press box going, just put DeVito in. Even just to give Dungy a breather. Like, let him see what he's doing. Like, just take him out and have him just, just you know, maybe him having the game taken out of his hands for a second will make him think. We'll make him stop. We'll make him. We'll make him just kind of wonder what the hell's going on. Like, give him a moment. Just, just take the ball out of his hands to let him know that you got to do a better job with it. And Devito goes out there and throws three touchdowns. He goes out there in like five seconds after forty-two yard touchdown to Nikeem Johnson. Then in overtime, Jamal Custis touchdown, and then Ravion Pierce touchdown. He helped the team get one more first down in North Carolina, 46 more yards, 546 yards for Syracuse, 500 for North Carolina. 
do a little bit more and a little bit of this and a little bit of that. How about this? Syracuse had the ball for 24 minutes and 45 seconds. North Carolina had it for 35 minutes and 15 seconds. This is when you do more with less. They had the ball for almost 11 minutes less than North Carolina, and they won the game. Because he came out. And did what he needed to do. And how many backups that aren't, you know, that aren't at Florida State or Alabama or Georgia or Ohio State, how many quarterback backups in college football can step in and not manage the game, but lead the team to victory? Stop the bleeding of the team. You were up 20 to 7, then you're down 21 20. You get back up. You go to overtime, and you throw two touchdown passes to hold off the North Carolina Tar Heels. So my ingredients to success, DeVito cannot be off the table. DeVito cannot be. I'm not saying that you necessarily have to put him out there first, but he cannot be off the table as an option. And if and when there is a mistake by Dungy, a series of mistakes by Dungy, then you need to go out there and put him out there. We know that he is capable. We know that he can play. We know that when called upon, Tommy DeVito is one of those guys that you would see at a big-time program that's winning a lot of games where their backup to the backup to the backup could be a starter anywhere. And that's what people say. You know, the fourth stringer in Alabama, the fourth stringer at Florida State could start at, at Syracuse. Well, Tommy DeVito, the backup quarterback who redshirted last year, did not play. Look at what he's doing right now. Look at how effective he is. So one of the ingredients to success is, yeah, you could put the ball in Eric Dungy's hands to start the game, and I think that they will. But after that, it's an open competition. After that, it is an open competition. Because DeVito has now won two games for Syracuse. And he's not the starting quarterback. When he comes in, and Western Michigan was his first first experience in college, so I expected him to have butterflies. I expected him to make mistakes. Since then, how quickly he's come along. Nobody can understate how fast he's come along. So the respect has to be pretty high for him with the Syracuse community. And like I said in the voting, you guys are either dead even or you're picking Tommy DeVito. Eric Dungy's not winning any of the polls that I put out. So you guys are seeing this. You're picking up what he's putting down. So I think Dungy's got to be on the table. I think they have to use the running backs more. I think if Dungy's going to be out there, everybody thinks he's going to run on every single friggin' play, so use it to your advantage. Dungy's going to have to take the super glue off of his hands and let the ball be in the hands of somebody else. Fake the run, dish it off to Jarvion Howard. Fake the run, Dante Strickland. Fake the run, go to Moniel. And for goodness sakes, Ravion Pierce is, what, 95%, 90% effective when they pass him the ball in the end zone in close quarters? And and just do what you do. Dungy's used it before. Fake the quarterback sneak forward. Put your head down. Look like you're going forward. Then drop back, lob lob it over top to Ravion Pierce. That play works. He should have a touchdown a game, if not multiple now. Nikeem Johnson can run. Sean Riley is elusive, and he can run. Mo Neal has shown he can do some good things. Dante Strickland may not have the yardage, but he can get in the end zone. Jarvion Howard's got the, got the muscles and the legs to get after it. Taj Harris can make some big plays. Jamal Custis can come, come down with some big ones. When Syracuse has Tommy DeVito, and they air it out, and he stands in the pocket, and he only runs... At a, as a very last resort, like the 10th option. That's the quarterback that I think is going is what Syracuse needs. Eric Dungy can do a big play, but how many times is Eric Dungy's big play a pass? How many times is his big play throwing a, throwing a, a dime downfield 
60 yards. It's not. It's running 60 yards. And he should use it to his advantage. The thing is, he wants to run all the time. But if he could be a little less selfish in holding on to the ball and would fake that run, you got completed passes all day long. You got running backs getting being effective all day long. And again, I'm not saying that you have to take him out. I'm not saying that he doesn't have to play for you. I'm just saying that he wants to be Superman. He always wants to save the day. And I appreciate that. But it's become, it's gotten to a point where it's detrimental to the team, and he's got to stop. So the ingredients to success is that Dungy's going to have to share the ball. Dungy's going to have to prove that he's multidimensional. Dungy's going to have to fake the run and use it to his advantage. They're going to have to use the running backs more. And if none of that works and Dungy doesn't listen to anything, then you got to bring in Tommy DeVito. I respect the hell out of Eric Dungy. But the whole, I'm going to be Superman, and I'm going to save the day with my feet on every play, and I'm not going to survey the field that much, It's not, that's not going to help the team win games. Tommy DeVito, big risk, big reward as a traditional quarterback. Eric Dungy, I'm going to run all over the field. And I'll break a 40-yarder or a 60-yarder or I'll get a touchdown and people will love it. But they start the second half with a rushing touchdown from him and then five punts, a fumble, and another punt. And I'm sitting up in the press box going, what's it going to take for Dino to make a switch? And shout out to Dino because a lot of coaches would never do that. Dino, coaches everywhere, people everywhere. You have to understand, if it's not working, you got to change it. If it's not working, you got to change it. You can't just bang your head against the wall and say, well, it's never worked, but it will. It's not working. But you got to know when, when it's time to say, let's keep doing this or let's try something else. And that was a let's try something else moment that I'm sitting up in the press box going, you got to do it, you got to do it, you got to do it, you got to do it. But most coaches don't listen. And apparently the osmosis worked between me and Dino, and he put him out there because it needed to be done, even just to give Eric a breather. So that's an ingredient to success. The defense has to get better at stopping the run. They're allowing way too many plays. And I told you, what did I do? I prefaced the game, did I not? I said Michael Carter just had over 150 yards on 18 carries in the previous game. He's going to come in here and run all over Syracuse because it, because of what happened in, against Pittsburgh and because of what happened against Clemson. They gave up almost 300 yards on the ground to Clemson and three rushing touchdowns. They gave up almost 300 yards to Pittsburgh and three rushing touchdowns. And then... They allowed three different running backs in North Carolina to run all over them. Antonio Williams, Michael Carr, everybody got out there and did what they needed to do. And they kept them in the game, and they kept them in field goal range, and they kept them moving the ball, and they helped them to overtime. Syracuse has to get better against the run. You can't just be a team that's not good against the run. You got to get better against the run. You can't just be like, hey, that's kind of like our Achilles heel this year. We just can't stop the run, but we can do everything else. That's like saying, hey, I'm going to lock all the doors in my house except for my back door. And if somebody breaks in that door, well, I guess it was just meant to happen because I can't lock every door. I can't watch the whole house. It's like saying I'm going to do a good show Monday through Thursday, but on Fridays I'm going to give it about 50% because Fridays just isn't my day. Know your weaknesses and attack them in a positive way before somebody attacks them in a negative way. Those are your ingredients to success in football and in life. God bless you all. Have a great day. Tomorrow's show will feature West Gen- the West Genesee Wildcats going into their game against Liverpool. West Genesee is playing in Class AA Section 3 semifinals, Final Four. They will be up against Liverpool October 26th, this Friday at 7.30 p.m. at CNS. They're the second game. The first game is CNS against Fayetteville Manlius at 4.30 p.m. I will be at both I will be at both games. My voice after a week is still coming in and out. I hope it'll be back soon for good. But CNS FM first, then West Genesee and Liverpool. On tomorrow's show, Wednesday, October 24th, you'll hear from Brian Felix, Chandler McCavin, Cole Wade, Ben Ruste, and head coach Joe Corley from our special at the Wildcat Sports Pub. Cannot wait to share that with you and so much more. God bless. In the meantime, follow me on Twitter at CallDT. 
Instagram at Wake Up Call DT. Like the page on Facebook at Wake Up Call DT, and you'll find everything and more on WakeUpCallDT.com. All the business partners that we're proud to have, as well as the TuneIn radio app, the Podbean podcast, the iTunes podcast, the RSS feed, over a thousand shows, fantasy football advice, and so much more. So get yourself to WakeUpCallDT.com, become a member, subscribe, bookmark it, and be ready for tomorrow's show. God bless you all in the meantime, and make sure this Thursday, Thursday, October 25th, that you come out and see me at the Wildcat Sports Pub for Game Show Night, which is the last Thursday of every month. God bless you in the meantime. Be well, and I'll talk with you soon.